what's going on guys today we're going to be talking about firewall rules and we're going to be talking a little bit about mango rules so let's get right into it as you all know i've been working a lot on the network and um i've been just learning lots of things um you know i do have my mtcna cert and then i'm working on the mtcre cert and then um uh we are working currently on the network for, for Terra and things like that, right? And one of the biggest things we do have to work on, though, is going to be our security, right? Which is all done on the firewall. So we're going to use my little Microtech cap that we have here because the nice thing, like I've always mentioned before, is this little hap that I use here is the exact same as the big boy router down in Florida. There's no change in the wind box. The only changes as far as is anything it's just the physical limitations of the device itself like obviously this little hap can't do the compute power of what the one in florida can do but besides that everything that's in router os is available to us just like it would be down in florida so this is one of the great things about microtik so today we're going to be using microtik obviously since that's pretty much what my networking skills are based around is microtik um so we are in Winbox right now, and this is currently on my my HAP that I use for practice. And I really strongly urge people who are trying to get into Microtik is to buy this little HAP and just practice on it. Because, and just hook up an ethernet to your computer, to a laptop, and just practice. Because guess what, if you lock yourself out and it's not like actually doing your networking, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's all just learning. So. If you lock yourself out, no problem. Just factory reset it and get back into it, right? Not a big deal. So just remember though, always, if you're not sure about something to click here on the safe mode, if you're not sure, cause maybe you, you don't wanna you know, lock yourself out. So always check this safe mode thing if you want, but I'm not really worried about it. So, so today we're gonna be going into the firewall. And as you can, uh, as you can see, we have no filter rules. We do have one NAT rule, and that is for the masquerade. That's just so that my computer can uh, get out to the outside world. So if you miss my one of my other videos about some like of the Microtik basics and stuff like that, this is the masquerade rule, where we are masking our private address over our public address. This way, when we mask it, the internet knows how to communicate with us because the internet does not know how to communicate with private addresses. Network, so NAT stands for Network Address Translation, which is in short term for anything that's going to be a private address. Um, and what I mean by private address, because that's what Microtik relates it to, a private address is like a, is, is a LAN, a local area network, a VLAN, anything like that, anything behind your router, right? That does not have a public IP. Like your computer at home is probably like 192.168.1.3. 23, right? That's a private address. That private address alone cannot access the internet on its own. It has to do, it has to go through NAT to translate it to order for it to get it out to the outside world, right? Which is, we're doing that with this rule here, which is a, uh, we are using a source NAT rule. So source means anything going out, which is something we're trying to get to, right? That's like, we're, we're trying to leave the router. Okay. Anything that's coming in is desk NAT, which is destination NAT. And then anything input is whether the traffic from the outside or the inside is actually trying to physically go to the router, right? That's input. And that's pretty much all you'll, you'll need to deal with. I haven't had to deal with any output yet. Let's figure out, and then and then we have these filter rules, and this is and this is really where a lot of this is where you'll set all your main firewall rules, like if you want to block certain things, right? And you could tell if a rule is working correctly because you could see these packets, you could see the bytes, and you could see the packets. That means it's it's hitting your rule, it's hitting it, it's it means it's working. So let's go ahead and let's set up one of our firewall rules. And this is a really basic one, one that you should probably start with, or at least that's what I was taught. So we're gonna hit the plus and we're going to be using the forward chain, okay? Is the chain that we're going to be using. And then we're going to click 
connection state, right? Because there's all these other things here. We could use source addresses. We could use address lists. We could use uh, a particular interface like Ether1 or Ether2 or any of those things, right? Um, and then packet marks are what also portrays to mangle rules. And we'll get into that a little bit later. So we're going to say that everything that's already established and related, we want the action to be accept. So anything that we trust, we're going to say that we want to to be okay with that. Like, you know, we're going to go to Google, right? And you can already see some packets are hitting because I have like, because I have like battle net and stuff like that running already. You know what I mean? So I got stuff running in the background here. So you could tell that this rule is working right now, right? Because we could see packets and we could see traffic coming across this rule. Now we're going to set another rule that's, and we're going to do input and then we'll do connection state. Anything that's invalid, like maybe, and then we're going to do drop. Because anything, anything that's, that we're not, that we don't want to connect to on our network, and it's an invalid connection, we want it to just, to just go away. We don't want it, we don't want it at something to like start pinging our router and stuff like that. So input, invalid, and then we're going to say drop. Okay. Now you won't, you shouldn't see a lot hit this rule, right? This is only for invalid connections. As you can see here, we're going to create one more rule. And I'm just going to do this to show you how to, because everybody's really big into VLANs and Mikrotik is kind of different. And I think it's, it's the same as Jun Juniper and Cisco where VLANs actually natively talk to one another, right? Only unlike Ubiquity and like Draytech and like, prosumer stuff do the do do vlans not communicate the reason that they're able to to still communicate to each other on different subnets is because all of the gateways still lie inside of this router here the router is aware that all of these routes exist so as long as they exist and they have a route a gateway to reach that other subnet they will still go through so technically with Mikrotik, you really don't even need VLANs. All you have to do is, is you actually have to block the traffic that if you don't want a particular subnet communicating with another subnet, that all you have to do is block that traffic and then it will ne never be able to establish a connection. Right now we are on the 172.100.100.1 slash 24 panda bridge, right? I'm pretty sure. We can come up here to GHCP server and you can see that we have a lease. We have 172.100.100.254 is my computer. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to create a firewall rule. And we'll just check this because maybe, maybe I might kick myself out. But we're going to put it because now we want this rule to be above the drop one, right? We want it to be on the accept. So we're going to click plus. And then we're going to say source address. Anything from 172.100.100.1 slash 24. I do not want communicating with 10.10.1. .10 dot one slash 24 oops too many dots okay and then what i want to do is is i want to um i want to create a a drop now this now this router here now what we're going to do is is we're going to open up a uh, a command terminal and i'm going to attempt to ping across back over to my home network we have the command prompt up. We're going to ping 10.10.1.1. You see that the ping didn't go through and there wasn't that many packets sent, right? You can see request timed out and it's going to keep requesting the timeout. So you can see these, you can see the traffic, you can see the packets. So now that we've, we understand that how we can block and shape our traffic, right? Because we don't 
you don't even have to use VLANs. You could do everything in the firewall, right? Now we're going to get a little bit into mangle rules. And mangle rules are really, really cool because it lets us dynamically create address lists. And an address list is also in the firewall section right here. And we could just click plus and we could just say blocked, uh, you know, lands or blocked land. Oh, and you can just say, you know, 10.10.1.1, right? Click apply. Now we can go back to our original firewall rule. And instead of putting this address list here, what we can do is, is we can actually come down here to a address list and do the same thing, right? And then we'll bring the rule back up. So we're gonna ping 10.10.1.1. .1. We can't, right? Now the reason for that is, is, is because it's here in our address list, right? I do have some other subnets at my house, right? I have several other subnets and one of them is my mining subnet that I have here at my house. And it's on the 10.10.3.1 LAN. Now we're gonna ping it. Now, why can we ping this? Well, because that route, now the route, my, this little HAP router here has DHCP client from here to the router still, right? Because technically, it's on the 10.10.1.1 network, but because it goes to that route, it also knows all of the other routes that exist on that router, right? So because of that, we could still ping across to the other subnet, right? Even though it's on, a, it's, on its own VLAN, right? So how can we use Mango rules to be able to... Um, create address lists dynamically. So we're going to come over here to our mango rules. And this is just gonna be a very generic video. I'm not going in, into high detail of anything, but this is just so everybody can get like a basic understanding of the firewall and build their own rules, right? So we're going to say um, anything from the, uh, 172.100.100.1 uh, slash 24 subnet going to uh, this address of 10.3.1 slash 24. Okay, what we're gonna do is, is I'm actually gonna come over here to our actions and we're gonna change it to add to destination address list right and we're going to come down here and put it with our other address list that we created which is the blocked land right i'm going to click apply now we have a mangle rule so technically when i ping this again it should because of how we have our firewall configured through this blocked list where we're able to condense our actual filter rules more because anything that gets labeled with a blocked land just gets all bunched into that one rule. That way we don't have a ton of rules on here, right? And this also lets us dynamically add stuff because it will automatically either, you can either generate lists. So let's see if this blocks the other subnet here and after it's dynamically added to this address list. Well, it worked. So that's gonna conclude today's video. Now, it was a really basic video for how to get started with your firewall. Now, everybody's situation is gonna be different for their network security needs and what they need to actually block and or Things that they need to filter out your network is going to be different than mine and yours is going to be different from the next person's so there is no way to specifically know what you guys want to do and how you guys should configure your firewall now 
if let's say you wanted to, I'm just using this as an example here. Let's say you made another subnet off one of the ports on your Mikrotik, and that's that's like goes to a switch, and that switch is like for vast AI and like flux nodes and things like mining, like stuff that maybe you don't all the way trust with things on your network, right? Like you don't want to trust that stuff in order to, to talk to other things on your network, right? You could do that with all those rules I just set right there because you don't need the VLAN to separate it out because you're using actual mangle and firewall rules to physically stop the actual traffic from getting across to the network. Now, don't forget some of the basic IP services and other things that I showed you in one of my first videos on how to harden your router, disabling SSH and Telnet and FTP and all of this other stuff, like disabling all of those ports on your router and only using Winbox. So it will limit your traffic a lot. Now, I will probably do another video sometime in the future soon is I'm gonna be showing you what how to use IP knock, right? And that feature is essentially a user must knock on a on a specific number of ports in a very specific order in order to get accepted to be able to SSH or anything like that, right? Or be able to use Winbox. And what that does is is also you can use your um you can use your address list rules. And when you do that, you can time people out and also permanently ban addresses that you know are nefarious, right? Because they're trying to keep knocking on it. And after like three attempts, they get timed out for whatever time period you want to set. Like most people set a day, which is a really long time on the internet. So usually if something gets set that long, people usually just quit and just don't try. All right. So let me know if you like this kind of content. Give it a thumbs up. Maybe, you know, like and subscribe. And just remember, this is the Monarchy giving you the most hashes. And I'll see you next time.